coming live from an airstream somewhere in Tornado Alley, bringing you the people, places, and stories from the Panhandle to the Red River. This is your Only in Oklahoma show. And welcome to the show. We're headed to Muskogee. It's that time of year again. It's the Christmas Castle activities if you're into the Renaissance and uh, Santa Claus. I'm Brett. And I'm Harley. Actually, there may be an issue with Santa Claus, but we'll get to it. Uh, man, how have things been? It has been a quiet, quiet passage in the Only an OK show. Uh, yes, I think we prob- probably need to discuss a little bit about why we have been lax, lax. in our releases um, here of late. It's almost, For starters, yeah. Brett had a COVID scare. Had a little bit of a COVID scare. Uh, got uh, had to go in. It, I was checking, you know, like I've said uh, to many people, I was checking more po- more boxes that said I had it than said I didn't. Which you know, I don't know. It's you, you, you decide. Um, I'm not here to de- to determine whether or not it's a thing or not. But I, you know, because I have a small child at home, and you know, we've got some. Uh, you know, you you have to be on high alert. You just never know. You don't know how this thing operates. So I went, got tested, still had all the symptoms. Doctor said, "We'll come back later in the week. Um, we'll test again, see what happens there." So I was in a, in my bedroom for forty eight hours. There are wall carvings in there. Um, you know what I mean? It, it's like if anybody discovers the the remnants, the they're going to be trying to figure out what these scribings. Uh, on the wall are, and I have no idea that most of them were, were done in a fever dream. <laughs> but I am here. I did catch up on some movies, um, and I didn't fall asleep during. Which is weird. When I'm on, was on quarantine. As a general rule, I'm in bed eight thirty nine o'clock. I'm 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 ready to saw logs. But for some reason, being in a room by myself for forty eight hours, I was up till one or two o'clock in the morning. You know what I mean? It was like I was a, a uh, not a teenager, but in a late twenties, early thirties version of myself. Yeah, but you're basically laying in bed all the time anyway. So, well, I know. I would imagine that would mess with your. Sleep oh yeah, it messed schedule. everything up. Yeah, absolutely. And went back to work, and I felt like I didn't belong there. And but yeah, I'm here. We're good. Everything's good. Back to normal, <laughs> as normal can be. Uh, with the the new promotion, my schedule, everything's wonky. So yes, that has been another little. Uh, hitch in our giddy up, yes, our giddy uploads, if you will, yes, our giddy uploads. So, what's new with you? Uh, nothing. Everything is the same. Everything is awesome. I noticed that you decorated your tree. We have to. Do. You've yeah, started. We... You've started. Things are beginning to look a lot like Christmas around here. Yes, it is very Christmassy here. Mm-hmm. But uh, the castle in Muskogee. Yeah, they're about to turn it up to 11. Taking it to another level. Right, and we'll talk about that next. So I like to fancy, I I fancy myself a hat guy. I've got a ton of hats that I've paid. I don't usually pay more than, I don't know, I get get a good deal. I have a lot of hats. What I don't have, I don't have a lot of custom-made hats. Do you have a lot of custom-made hats that are made especially for you? I do not. Well, if you're looking to get some custom made hats, there's a lot of decorating involved with a custom made hat, especially if you see look at this hat. Look at the hat I have on. It's embroidered. Well, if you need that, you know where you can get it at. Master Threads. Master Threads. And they can embroider on anything. Anything. The hood of a Volkswagen. The hood of a hoodie. The hood of a hoodie. <laughs> That's probably where they're best they're best known for is their Of all of the hoods, a hoodie is probably their most Yes. Asked for, requested. Absolutely. Embroidery job. And if you're looking for a free quote, they're easy to get a hold of. It's 405-673-3787. Or you can find them on the intrawebs at masterthreads.us. That's Master Threads. So early in the the annals of uh, Only an OK uh, history, we interviewed the Muskogee Castle. Yes, we did. But it was for a different was season. A- it was what? the witching season, right? It was, yes. It was for Halloween. But did you know they do Christmas? They do. And did you know that you were invited? 
to go with me and my whole fam <laughs> right. up there this weekend. Right. And you declined. No, I didn't decline. You declined. You answer- said, Psh, Muskogee yeah, Castle. M- mis- like, more like, mis- get over it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I unfortunately, I won't be able to attend my schedule. I have to request nothing, nothing shady. I'm not casting shade. But if I want a weekend off, especially with the way things are for me now, if I want a weekend off, I've got to ask for it last year. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not able to go. Uh, but it looks like it's going to be a ton of fun. There's a lot of stuff to do now. It opened at the end of uh, November and will run up through, I believe, New Year's Eve. Um, they're open from 530 to 10. But there's a lot of stuff to do there. There are a lot of things to do there. Right. Which is why we're going to go. You're going to go. You're going to go, but you've got options. You realize that. So first and foremost, the one that is really designed for your cheapskate road warrior, the person that wants to drive through the lights. Right. They have the full on light show and apparently they have more inflatables than just about anywhere on the planet. Yes. And you can do, you were saying the cheapskate stuff. You can drive through it for free. Now, what they do ask, and I think a lot of... I, I don't think this is unreasonable. They ask for a donation. They ask for a donation. Right. But, more importantly, what? the drive through they they like for you to start at the castle. Uh-huh. But it does, it's not just at the castle. So, the Garden of Lights at Honor Heights Park, mm-hmm. uh, it's a, a neighborhood real close to oh, the... Oh, yeah. The whole thing is set up. Um, like a million... There's over a million lights. Did you count them? Well, I... Counted on them to give me the proper information to deliver to oh, the Oh, so you're just taking people's... I'm, we need a fact checker Fact checker oh, on this. There will be one. We may we may be banned for, for not fact checking. Yeah, because, I mean, if there's actually only 998,000 lights... Right. Then we've lied to the universe. We have. And I don't know if you're aware of this. There's a lot of uh, miscalculations these days. So you want to be sure... We want to have our facts together. Let's just say around a million lights. <laughs> Is that... Can we get by with that? I think maybe we could... In our opinion, they have about a million lights. Assuming none of them go out, burn out in, during the, the the light display. I would say on average around a million lights. It's probably a good number. I, I like it. Okay. But if you want to get out of the car... Yeah. I think that's where things really kind of take a turn. For the better? What I like, and I don't know about you, I don't mind the drive through light experiences. I go to see a lot of light displays during Christmas. But I really like when I can get out of the car and kind of... There are a lot more photo opportunities. You know what I mean? I'm somebody that I just discovered recently, I have 6,000 photos on my phone. So I like to take pictures. So I think the get out and walk around is probably the best the best mode for me. You have 6,000 photos 6, photographs. on your phone, yep. and you have 98,000 <laughs> unread emails. So that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> and 100 photos on Instagram. I'm sorry. I've got to go through. I have to go through and catalog everything. Dude, I'm literally going to leave here and take 100 pictures before I even hit the turnpike today. So <clears throat> at Muskogee Castle, though, yeah. they have a train ride. It's a $10 uh, ride. It's a $10 ride. It basically, the train goes through the interior of the, of the lights uh, display. Yep, the village. The village. Yeah, that was the. Yeah, that's the what you're. Yeah, that's for. the one you're looking for. And it looks fun. Now, what I like about it, though, yes. for $10, you get a little bit more of the behind the velvet rope. You get displays that you're not going to see on the freebie. Like what? I'm not 100% sure because I haven't paid $10 yet. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, they're not going to, you think they're just going to give it away? Are you going to just tell me what I get for $10? Okay, cool. Well, uh, I think that price includes like the, the train actually goes through Santa's bedroom. Probably. You see like Miss Claus changing into her bloomers and things like that. Right. Right. I, I would think for 10 bucks, that's worth it. Worth the price of admission. <laughs> uh, but if you like the little bit, if you like it a little bit more rustic, they have a hayride. Mm-hmm. That's five dollars. That's kind of one of those situations, you know, the blanket, hot cocoa, hot cocoa. The I think it's more 
the traditional vibe to me. Right. Are you a hay? Let, let me ask you: Are you a hay ride or a train ride guy? I think I'm a train ride guy because I'm old. What you don't like that because it does? It's not as bumpy. Yeah, I don't, don't want to be bounced boom, boom. around. Yeah, I did uh, a hay ride at Orr Family Farm holding a. a a small child that I was concerned that we're, him and I were both going to bounce out of it, but it was fun. But yeah, for five bucks though, not bad. And kids under one are free, which I, I would hell I should hope so. They're not drinking cocoa. They're not, you know what I mean? They're the only warm milk they're drinking is on tap. It, it, I think five bucks is <laughs> would be a little steep to charge a kid under one. Don't you think? <laughs> I would agree with that hundred percent. Um, also, they've got camel rides, mm-hmm. which I'm. How do you feel about camel rides at Christmas time? You know they they have they may or may not have a camel ride somewhere near here at Christmas. I think they actually do one at the light the festival lights in Chickasha. They do. Um, Connor did one one year while we were there. I don't know. I mean, it kind of gives you the three wise men vibe. You know what I mean? Like we're headed to Bethlehem. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking they were going for. With uh, in general, you know, yeah. like this time of year, I don't know though. I don't. I'm not a big fan of camels. Why? They seem kind of mean. I stopped being a big fan of camels when I was 40 years old and realized that the camel humps didn't actually have water in them. We were led to be- <laughs> were we not led to believe that most of our lives that the the camel humps had water in them? I, dude, I don't know where you went to school. I swear, cartoons taught me, dude. What did car- cartoons taught us near everything? Okay, I learned everything I needed to know about science from cartoons. But anyway, camels at Christmas, I, five bucks. I mean, it, it every I think every kid's got a got a curiosity about it. I'm I, I'm. Are you in it for the pony ride or the camel ride? If you were going to choose, if you're a child, what's more exotic? Yeah, I I I agree. Camels kind of look like a mythical creature. I remember thinking as a kid when I saw one in person that they, they just something that they're almost like this prehistoric thing about it. Horse, yeah, horses, of course, of course, of course, unless of course it's a camel. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll ride a camel for five bucks. I don't know if it wants. I I think the camel would probably charge me more for riding it. Um, I think I'm probably a hundred dollar. <laughs> I'm a hundred dollar camel ride, <laughs> to be honest. But yeah. It, it looks fun, but buyer beware. Yes. They are doing some blackout dates, not necessarily blackouting the the free drive through, but the other activities, the hay ride that we just talked about, uh the camel rides and things like that and the other activities will be uh closed for I think it's gonna be from the fourteenth to the seventeenth. I and mean, I don't know if that's for maintenance. I don't know what if the camels need their water bags refill filled or I don't know. <laughs> But yeah, so you may plan your calendar because they do have, if you go to their events page, um, they've got a really detailed calendar. It shows you everything as it's scheduled, when it's scheduled. So, but also, you know how things are. Things change uh, in the blink of a freaking eye. So you definitely want to keep up with their events calendar to make sure uh, you're going to be at there, be there at the right time. You know, as far as food goes, yeah. I pretty well think they've got it covered as well. Oh, yeah. uh, Rudolph's Cafe. Mm-hmm. Which opened on December fourth. Yep, and is open until basically the end of the month, the twenty seventh mm-hmm. or something along those lines. Uh, you can get lots of Yuletide treats and yep. holiday beverages and some holiday movies. Yeah, they're doing movies there as well. Uh, and it is there's no price of admission. It's basically if you're there, you know, you're, you're getting your cocoa, you're getting your. I, from what I understand, while you're getting your concessions, they're going to have holiday movies playing in the background and things like that. So there's, I mean, it just seems like there's a lot of stuff for you to do. But, yes, you might want to mention what. There, what is the biggest key ingredient? Okay, I'd say baby Jesus is number one. Okay. Somewhere, it just depends. I, I don't think anybody's ever thanked Jesus for a bicycle. But Santa Claus may or may not be there. He's going to be suspiciously absent for photo opportunities. Yes, so... Thanks to um, the current... Heat miser? (laughs) Health environment. (laughs) Santa Claus does not like people being in his business. No. So he's doing everything remote through email and uh, text messages. And you can follow him on Instagram, I think. Can you even write him a letter anymore? Uh... 
an email. I don't think you can actually do a real letter because it, then you you touched it and somebody's got to spray it with Lysol. And okay, so I have a question. Yeah, what on the on the realms of Santa Claus? I posted this question earlier, and I think Facebook is like they try to block me every chance I get. You know, if I'm not slamming somebody, if I'm trying to do something positive, nobody sees it. So anyway, every kid had their Red Rider BB gun gift. The one thing that you lost sleep over, you know what I mean? Yeah. That you wrote a very detailed, I wrote ex- explicitly detailed letters to Santa Claus. I had the J.C. Penney catalog open right here, the Toys R Us toy catalog right there. No one damn good well it wasn't happening. I don't know why I thought that, uh, but I would write down write down to the damn model number. <laughs> not I would go not the one that has the thing, but the one that has the thing. Right. What was your go to like your holy grail? I'll probably not get it, but I'm going to ask anyway. And you either got it or you didn't. Uh, there were probably two. Okay. One a slingshot like the wrist rocket. Oh yeah, those things were bad to the bone, man. Yeah, I. Asked for that one year and got it, and then killed my mom's hummingbird with it. Oh, how do you kill a... Dude, I <laughs> I was there, one of my friends was there, and he said, I bet you can't hit that bird, oh. and we were a football field away from this bird. I couldn't have hit this bird with a nuclear blast. <laughs> with a laser sight. <laughs> but somehow, from a hundred yards away, I hit this bird... That you know how hummingbirds fly, you can barely see them. Right, yeah, yeah. And literally drop that bird, and I never had my butt beat harder than that moment in time when my mom walked out to see that bird fall from the sky. So the one thing that you wanted became a, a harbinger of death. Yes. What, okay, on the opposite side, what was the one thing you asked for that you didn't get? The Millennium Falcon. Now, is this something you'd ask for repeatedly? I don't know, but I wanted it. I really wanted it when I was right. six. Hmm. Me, it was probably a Nintendo. I mean, I remember where I was. I could take you into the spot on the floor, but the people that live there would probably call the cops. Where I wrote the letter, NES system with the Duck Hunt Mario. I mean, I was like, make sure it has <laughs> Duck Hunt Mario. And I went through and went, I want, because I just recently saw some of these games that people have now. That I went, shit, that's one of those, that was one of those Grail games. And it wasn't even a great game, not even considered a great game, but it was a Nintendo game. I was like, and uh, this one, not the part, not the part two that's, you know what I mean? Right. Didn't get it. Oh, that sucks. But I can't, they're, they, you know, it's hit or miss. So the bottom line is, kids, you're not going to be able to tell Santa what you want at the Muskoka Castle. Sorry. <laughs> All right. But if you have some great ideas or want to share your experiences of the fun activities that you've done around the Christmas time in Oklahoma, feel free to let us know. You can find us on all of the social medias, the Mm -hmm. only and okay show. And we're even on parlor, aren't we? We're on all of the social medias. We are on all of the social medias. Yeah. So come see us, tell a friend, spread the gospel of the only and okay show. I'm Brett. And I'm Harley, and we're out of here. Peace. So, this is Christmas. So, I was going to tell you. What have you done? I kind of miss going to the movies, you know? I miss having that. That was my outlet. I like to go to the... I didn't like to do much else, but, you know, we'll see. Still one of my favorite movies of all time what? from a movie, movie theater standpoint. Mm. It's got to be top ten. Um, Alien versus Predator Requiem. I think what I... I yeah. I miss the Christmas Day tradition of yeah, going to I a movie. Too. You know? Then here comes divorce. It ruins everything. Thanks, Harley. Appreciate it. But, uh, yeah, I, that was a pretty memorable experience. I've never watched it again after that. I think I have. I think I watched it once and I couldn't. You couldn't get through it without crying? It was bad. It's not, it's, 
But you know what's funny? Movies that are bad have come around, and they're so bad that they're, they've been heralded as cult classics. I don't agree with. I don't agree with that to a degree. I think there are some. Uh, there's a movie. It was a. You could only find it on tape, and somebody found it, a YouTube link for it and sent it to me. Uh, but it was a collection of sci-fi horror movies mm -hmm. or sci-fi horror shorts. Right. And it was so god awful. But me and my friends had so much fun making fun of it. Right. That uh, it, it, it to us it would have been a cult classic. But I don't think you could just label, you know, like Sharknado, not a cult classic. It's a uh, I don't know though. It depends on who you ask. I don't I don't agree. I think you when you talk about cult classics, Rocky Horror Picture Show is one. Yeah. It's where it has a legit following of mm -hmm. people that are die hard fans. Right, that know every that word and know every keep every it call back. Yeah, every clap back to the movie, yeah. A bad movie does not qualify. Somebody said uh they put Batman and Robin. You remember that one from ninety Eight. Yeah, but I still I don't I do not think that qualifies as a cult classic. But when people say that movie's so bad it's good, what is your so bad it's good that I think most people could go, I can see that. Or or is it some cinema obscura only you and a few other people would probably agree to? Is there is there something you're like it's so bad it's good? Mm, I don't know. I mean, I enjoy making fun of bad movies as a you general You watch movie. a lot of... I mean, and nothing against you. You and I, we've had a few of our staple movies that we watch, that we our go-tos, our comfort, our comfort foods mm -hmm. in, in movies. But there are times when I, I come over and you're watching, so I'm like, dude, there's no, not, a, not even a remote possibility. I wouldn't put this movie on to fall asleep to. And you, you watch those like it's... Because I was going through your voodoo going, okay... Hit, miss, hit, miss, 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 hit. What misses? Um, Okay, cult classic, I think, is Jack Frost. Yeah? I think a lot of people would say that. Yes. What else was on there? Um, Gosh. Yeah, pull it up. I mean, you, you've got a pretty a varied selection of movies. Okay, I'm looking at the top row. Bloodshot. Uh, not the worst movie I've seen, not the best movie I've seen. I don't Bloodshot like Bloodshot is on here because I wanted to watch the movie. I don't like anything Vin Diesel's in. And it was the same price to rent it as it was to buy it. Vin Diesel's best movie is a movie that you don't even see him in. Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> True story. Next yeah. row. Yeah. Uh, looking at what you got there, uh, Jack Frost kicks it off. It looks like you're kind of doing a little bit of a, ho a holiday theme there with your top three on that line. Um what is it down there with? Uh, no, 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 no! You're gonna what? What, you're gonna shoot right past Monster Squad and Puppet Masters. Monster Squad, that's a, that's a top dog. Puppet Master is a great movie. At, Puppet Master is a cult classic. Yes. Uh, House, okay, nice. Skyscraper, me. Same thing. Dirty Dancing, that's not yours or Pitch no. Perfect. Not bad. I mean, kind of okay. Let's go. Let's fast. Let's scroll down a little bit more. Christmas Carol, I, that's a number. That's the number one in my. Mm -hmm. Okay, Christmas Vacation. I see what you're doing there. Um, I got no issues with that line. I've never seen the Dark Terror. Dark, dark Terror. <laughs> I've heard it's dark a Dark Tower. Terror. Dark yeah, Tower. It's not good. A uh, good Christmas movie is uh, 30 Days of Night. That's another good one. Uh, I'm just saying, you've been known in the past to pick some movies that are... Oh, dark, John Carpenter's They Live. There's nothing wrong with that. It's, very, it's, it's woke now. Lost in Space. Would you agree? Yes. Let, they live as, as part of woke, woke culture. Now. But there's your AVP. Yeah, but that's not Requiem. No, it's not Requiem. That's right. We all agree that AVP is a decent movie. It's a decent movie. But AVP Requiem is AVP CSI. Yeah, it's um, really bad. You walked right past Chain Reaction, though. Not bad. Classic. Big Trouble in Little China. Classic. Oh, yeah, that's, that, that, that gets in there. But, I mean, go down a little bit more. Racing you spent Arizona? But, you spent, a mo spent money on Project Almanac. Um, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> it's a thirty-six percent, which could, in some cases, give it. I don't street know what credibility. I, I honestly don't know what it is. So it was probably either a bundle purchase or somebody had bought it and gave me the. Well, it says resume, copy. so you didn't finish it. You didn't even barely start it, according to that. Um, what else? Okay, you got the Blade Quadrilogy, not bad. 
But is, for the most part, right or wrong, you've rented some movies that you didn't. Well, we've both rented some movies, um, like the tenth Lost Boys. That was garbage. Uh, let's see what else you got. Uh, clearly, some not you picks in here. No, the all of this from here to the beginning mm-hmm. came free with the account. Okay, I remember when you got so I married an axe murderer. It's when that wa- you've had voodoo since it started. Yeah, so I remember that. I'm just saying, I think my go-to so bad it's good movies are probably a movie very few people have heard of until in the last few two or three years. It's a movie called The Room. It's so terrible that it's good. It's probably the worst movie I've ever seen, but it's so good because it's the worst movie. I don't, I don't know how you can qualify that. Those two do should not go together. <laughs> Uh, is that why you learned how to play poker? Killer that that Killer stands pat. <sighs> He's got one of those anti Mason force fields. So when did you dig, dig, dig that one back up? Uh, somebody sent me a link to it a few weeks back. That's a pretty good, so bad it's a good one. I mean, I like doing those. I like to sit there and just kind of watch a bad movie and talk about it the whole time. Yeah. Like riff tracks or mystery science. Yeah. All right. Three, two, one. Hang on a second. Hello, my honey. Hello, my darling. Hello, my ragtime gal. (laughs) Ready? Um. All right. Three, two, one.